Hare Rade, everybody. Thank you for inviting me to read. And please bless me that I can do it in a proper way to please you. So we continue with Milap Kusumanjali verse 13. And I'm going to read the verse. And we continue for the translators uh, just on the first page of the verse <clears throat> where Narottam Das Dakur uh, is cited is uh, where is <clears throat> his song. Uh, so on my edition it's uh, page 54. Goranga? Yes. You said that this is an old edition if there is this. Um, it's great. In, uh, so many differences in the words 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. So just read. Uh, you have old version. Mm -hmm. What should we do? Okay. Uh, I made translations on Croatian, but I have to change okay. this translation because it's much better version in old version of Vilapa. Uh -huh. I have to add some things in Croatian translation. Yeah, but this is the great, uh, many differences are inside. Oh my goddess. When you go out to meet Krishna in the moonlit night, your eyes fearfully move in all directions, like bumblebees turning the whole forest into blue lotus petals. Is this person not to be seen by these eyes? <clears throat> so I'm going to repeat the verse now. Oh my goddess, when you go out to meet Krishna in the moonlit night, your eyes fearfully move in all directions, like bumblebees, turning the whole forest into blue lotus petals. Is this person not to be seen by these eyes? No, I'm sorry, I cannot resist. I have to say it's just a small thing. Yo, so we can see here how Raghunath is praying very eagerly and humbly, but very, very eagerly with full determination. Oh, my dear Radha, you are giving love to everyone just with your glances, with your eyes. Is it possible that these eyes will miss this person? Please cast, cast one glance upon me because you are spreading your love in all directions, even all Vrindavan became blue. Why all Vrindavan became blue? Because Radhika's eyes are blue. And why Radhika's eyes are blue? Because she is completely in love with this bluish, naughty lover. Even. And all her feelings are condensed in her eyes. And when she is looking for him, going on Abhisar to meet him, all her love is pervading all creatures, moving, unmovable creatures. And because of that love, all of them suddenly becomes bluish. 
So I also want to be colored with your love, my dear Rade. Please don't miss me. I'm completely depend on you. Please give me the mercy of your eyes, because through your eyes, you will give me your heart and help me to be more close to you. You will give me Kripa, and by this Kripa, I will be very close to you, but also with your unlimited number of maid servants. This is my association. And I want to be colored also with their color of love. So we can see here how the color in transcendental world are is sign of love and it makes everyone to dive to drown in Radharani's love. So color is not like here in material world, very limited. Here in Vrindavan, colors are expression of different kinds of emotions which are coming from pure love. Sometimes all Vrindavan is green. And Rasik devotees, when they hear this, they immediately have a picture in front of their hearts and they say, now Radha and Krishna are loitering, wandering through the forests of Vrindavan and they are completely embraced. Tightly embraced with each, with each other and in that moment, golden color and blue color merged and it became green one. So when we hear the green, it means that somewhere in the forest, in the Yamuna River, in Gorda, or in some other places, rather, rather than Mohan are exchanging so much love that they actually become like a one person because of these tight embraces. So Raghunath here is praying deeply from his heart, please, I want to be seen by your Mahabhava eyes. And in that way, I want to drown in the ocean of your Mahababa, my dear Rasi. Please, if you don't mind, please give me that mercy. This is my only shelter. I just wanted to say before we continue. Very nice. Oh Lord. O ocean of mercy, my body burns in the false network of Maya, and when the Lord asks, do you only want freedom from that net then? Then Narodam says, no, no, not just that then maybe you would like to see me sporting in Vaikuntha or Tvarka. No, Nardam answers the Lord in the next couplet. When will I attain the company of the Sakis? String flower garlands in Rindavan and hang them around Radha and Krishna's necks being a manjari.
I will stand before them and fan them with a yucktail fan, and I will anoint their limbs with a guru and sandalwood scents. On the order of the Sakis, I will serve them leaf battle leaves and I will decorate them with tilak and sindura. I will witness their moonlight faces as they play their funny pastimes. I will seat them on a lion's throne. When will the day come that Narottam Das sees these sweet pastimes? My mind yearns for their mercy. So we can immediately feel uh, Radhe Radhe Maria, your mic is working. Please mute. Thank you. So we can see here how uh, Narottam is Radha Adi Sneh devotee, completely one pointed with all her, his heart, mind, and all his existence. He is one point to disposition and identification. I am Radharani's main servant. And Chakshu was reading first verse when he is, Narottam is discovering how Krishna tested him. Krishna approached to his devotee to test him and he is offering, do you want this, do you want that, do you want liberation from this cruel material world, do you want this liberation from this circle of birth and death, and Narottam is saying, no, I'm not, this is not the focus of my life, then Krishna very cleverly say, okay, no problem. Do you want me to see me and serve me in my Ivaikunta? Narutam said, no, no, I'm not interested about you like Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then he said, okay, but there is one more sweet form of mine. I am living in Varaka. You know? Many sweet devotees are all around, and I'm exchanging the love with my wives, Swakiyadas. Do you want this position? I'm offering you everything. But Narutam is saying, no, my dear, I really don't want that. I put, now, I'm putting your offering on my head very humbly, but in the heart, I'm saying no. <laughs> and what he wants, now he is explaining in another word, words, I want to stand before them, before you Galaki Shores in the association of all other Sakis, Manjaris, and be engaged in their loving devotional service. And, and I'm praying, when will that day come? So we can see here how much we have to learn to be determined in attaining 
our desire. Because some tests for sure will come. They can be tests from material world, Maya, but also we can see per Krishna personally comes in front of his devotee and says, look at me, I am here, I am yours. Do you want this? Do you want that? Do you want disciples? Do you want uh, fortune, money, positions? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is speaking, Nadanam Najanam Nasundarim. I don't want anything of this. I don't want followers. I don't want women's. I don't want fortune. I only want to become Dasanu 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 Das. And here in the second verse, here in Vilapa, Narottam is explaining what does it mean to be Dasanu Dasanu Das. And when devotee is sincere in his desire, then he will immediately catch this mood of Narottam Das Thakur. And he will think in his heart, I also want like this. And when he said, I also want, really want like this, with all sincerity of his heart, he will try as much as he can. Not perfectly, but as much as he can. He will try to follow this mood, this kind of consciousness, this kind of behavior, this kind of service. And this is the moment when devotee completely accepts guidance, goals, and the process how he will attain the goal. He doesn't have his own independent conception. Dr. G, you want to help me? You have something? I just was um, thinking that uh, uh, what kind of position Narodham has that the Lord is asking him what he wants compared to other processes where they are sitting for hundreds and thousands of years or whatever in some positions, how, some caves and one can see the difference between the so-called personal and impersonal approach. How huge this difference is. Krishna is testing in one way, in, on a one level, just on a one level. He is testing his devotee. But in the same time, he knows who is a Narottam, and his eternal position, and at the same time he wants to show all the world, spiritual world, material world, everyone, he wants to show how devotee like Narottam Das Thakur is fixed in his bow and love. And in that way he is glorifying that devotee. So in one sense he is testing giving us sadakas example you have to be aware what you really want don't mix your different desires just fix yourself in your goal and krishna is glorifying his devotee who is on that position and not even that Krishna actually is enjoying such kind of loving determination of devotee. 
it gives him so much pleasure. Look, this devotee, he is so attached with my beloved Radharam. That even if I come before him, he will be very nice and kind to me, but he will say, no, I'm sorry. I want <laughs> you only if you are with Radhar. When I see you all together, you with my Radhika, beloved Radhika, then I am completely situated in my natural position like her maidservants, not yours. So Krishna is enjoying. It gives him so much pleasure when he sees such a pure emotions, pure loyalty, and pure attachment for Radharani, who is the person whom Krishna loves the most. And he wants to show all the world. Look at him. I appear before him. But he said, sorry, no, I'm not interested in your liberation. I know that you can give all these stuffs, but I am not interested about this. I just want to be Dasanu Dasyanu Dasyanu Dasi. King Karim of my beloved. And I want only to do seva after seva after seva after seva after seva, after seva, after seva. 24 7 seva. <laughs> Janandaji, what do you think? I'm sorry uh, if I interrupt you. All, all right, no problem. No problem. Okay. Here. At home, before Sri Radhika goes on Abhisar rendezvous, the Sakis ask her, Radhe, why don't you sleep a little before we go out? Sri Radhika then says, no, 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 no need. I have to stay up the whole night. Sleeping, sleeping will only divert my mind. So she sits up the whole night with closed eyes. She has to walk in the deep darkness over the slippery path of Raj. So in the daytime, she throws some water over the courtyard and starts slipping and sliding around to prepare herself for the night trip. Before she goes, she closes all doors and windows of her home. And the Sakis ask her, Rade, why are you making everything dark? You cannot even see where you walk anymore. She Radhika replies, all right. I'm just training myself for going out later tonight. When Sri Radhika sees the picture of a snake at her home, she shivers of fear and terror. But later, when she's out on the forest path, and she encounters a real life snake. She fearlessly covers the jewels on its hoods 
so that her superiors won't be able to see her in their shining light. And she even covers the snake's mouth with her own hand, afraid that its hissing will be heard by her superiors. That is how she is, sometimes softer than a flower and sometimes harder than a thunderbolt. Is only Radhika going on Abhisar? Going means Sar and closer Abhi to Krishna? No. The practicing devotees are also all on Abhisar, but their Abhisar is much slower than hers. Radhe? Before we continue, we can see here from this small part of the Lila how Radhika is preparing herself to overcome some obstacles on her loving journey to meet Mohan. And she's preparing, she's training, practicing at home that no one can see her because she knows some obstacles will come on my path. And she is doing this kind of practice by pouring the water on the ground and the ground is becoming like a mud, very slippery. And Radhika is practicing to walk on this muddy earth, which is very, very slippery. And in the second paragraph he said, but this kind of Abhisar going to meet beloved is also something which can be compared with Jiva Abhisar. How Jiva, soul, is also very eagerly trying to go and ultimately meet beloved Ishtadev. And in this, on this path, it will be for sure many obstacles. We should not be naive to think that all obstacles will be automatically removed in front of Jiva who is running, running toward Radharani. But if the Jiva is guided by someone who is expert, who knows where all these obstacles on the path are already there, this person can be saved because his guide will help him. Be watchful here, here is the stone. Be watchful here, here is the mud. Be watchful here, here there are some beasts, very dangerous beasts like snakes, scorpions, and they can bite you. And the Shishya, who is completely surrendered to the guide, actually is following the footsteps 
of the guide and he's not going left or right independently because he understands very cleverly understand if i just make one step left or right i will step on the stone i will step on the snake i will slipper slide sorry i will slide So we can see here how devotee is actually very aware in one sense of his goal and in one sense he is very aware that to attain that goal he needs to properly follow the footsteps of his beloved guide, Guru and other Vaishnavas. And Radhika here is giving also her own example. Not only that example. He's, she is giving example how when we have this strong desire, all obstacles which appear on our path to attain <coughs> Radharani, because of this strong river, current of burning desire, we will just overcome these obstacles with the guidance of our spiritual master. And this is Raga, Vartma, Chandrika. Very narrow path, dark path, path, but narrow of Raga Nuga Bhakti, of devotional, spontaneous service. Under the guidance of someone who is like a torchlight in front of us. So, Mahajans are torchlights. And this is the reason we are coming back again on the second verse of Naruto when he wants to be surrounded with all Radharani's loyal maidservants and then he feels completely comfortable and relaxed to serve. We are on the way chanting and hearing for 25 years and we may think, what is the difference? my conscious is now and that of 25 years ago. It is apparat offenses and anartas, bad habits and attachments that make us move so slowly. When life is full of devotion, there will never be any shortage of love of God. Bhajan means to search for God. Vilajiva Goswami writes in his Priti Sandarbha the discourse on love divine. Devotion is not cut asunder by other topics or interests and it can also not tolerate other purposes of life. Amen. 
Prabhu Baba is here putting very practical question. Why I am so slow in my devotional advancement? And he is giving answer actually. Because of anarthas and aparadas. Simple question, practical question, and simple practical answer. But if we don't know what are the anarthas are, and if we don't know what aparadas are, then this answer is not sufficient. And it requires, if not sufficient, it requires from Sadaka to try to investigate what are anarthas and what are offenses or apparatus. Because in that way, he will understand how soul, his soul became conditioned and it cannot go out so easily from this conditioned stage of life. And he will understand that he needs a help. So this anarthas, what is it? What is anartha? Something which doesn't have any value, something which is actually false. It looks like a diamond, but this is the, just a piece of glass. So when soul is coming under the influence of material energy, mind, he is becoming conditioned. He is forgetting, soul is forgetting his real identity and it's starting to identify itself with these different material elements, material body, gross and subtle. And this is anartha. And it means it is a great misfortune. And if we really think deeply, about this subject, we will understand how the soul is captured with material energy, identify completely with material energy under the gunas, and this false identification is the biggest anartha, something which actually is a false, something which have no really root in reality. And automatically, from this conception, worldly conception of life, different kinds of offenses are appear. Offenses are appear, aparadas are appears from anartha. Shortly to say, wrong, falsely identification. I am this body, and everything what is around belongs to me. And automatically, with such kind of consciousness, the destiny of the soul is to make aparadas. And we say, when we say aparada, it means, you see, 
how Radha is present in this world, that everything which is not pure love, everything what is not Radha, is Appa. Wrong. False. And it cannot help the soul to awaken. And sometimes, old devotees, they know this because they have experience of this. We tried to liberate ourselves from this anartha and aparada. But after many years, we understood I failed. Because some very fortunate devotees, uh, <coughs> sorry, they understood something was missing <coughs> in my devotional practice. And very rare devotees understood finally and accepted that I miss the taste. Higher taste, which is present in Lila, in Guna of Radha Krishna, qualities of Radha and Krishna. And I didn't feed my heart, <clears throat> my soul, with Nama, Rupa, Guna, and Lila. I didn't feel with these feelings. I just practice like machine. I just practice like ritual. And so mechanically and so on. I miss the taste. Many things can be said about this anartha and aparada. Many things. But the crucial point is that soul is conditioned with material nature under the influence of maya and it cannot be free because of this influence to yoga maya and automatically is doing aparadas which are many really many many aparadas nama aparada seva aparada jiva aparada krishna aparada guru aparada Aparada, 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 everything what is not pure love. So I miss in my life only one thing, Radha. And when the pure transcendental love enter in my heart, then everything what is Appa, what is not Radha, <laughs> will be removed. This is the reason why I'm practicing Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, to know who is Radha, who is this embodiment of transcendental love, how to chant her name, how to meditate on her form, how to <clears throat> be closed with her qualities, because if I meditate on her qualities, her qualities will be manifested on myself. If I meditate on her maidservants, their qualities will be manifested on myself. So I'm not interesting any more about anything what is Appa, what is not Radha.
it can be really said so many things, but we should put the focus on relishing the lila, relishing Radha Moham loving pastimes, qualities of them and their devotees, and then the taste will penetrate and be infused in our heart. And then, if devotee is really sincere, he will automatically recognize his anarthas <laughs> and his aparadas, and very humbly approach to the sadhu and say, you are my only solution. You are my only helper. Please, help me to overcome this material level of consciousness and come in my natural position. Can we say that the apparat, the offenses, are just a way to defend our anarthas? Yes, because, yes, we can say that. Be they are going hand by hand, you know. If someone is in illusion, in illusion, automatically he, all his ideas are illusionary ideas. All his logic is illusionary logic. All his behavior is. Because he forgot that he is spiritual soul. And like you said, automatically he is trying through his apparatus, he is trying to confirm this illusion. It's going spontaneously, unconsciously. And this is the reason why Krishna is saying, no one can overcome my maya, only by my mercy. How by my mercy? When I bring him to my radha, to my love. And when this jiva become infused with my love, then jiva will attain constitutional position. And all these conceptions will just vanish, disappear. And jiva will be ultimately really liberated. From what? From material condition of life and consciousness. It's very simple. <laughs> how we became conditioned. <laughs> and Prabhupada, in the end of Bhagavad Gita, is very explained, because you wanted to be independent from the Lord. But it was happened time in memorial, in memorial, and you forgot it. And you became victim of wrong identification, wrong abhimam, victim. Jiva is victim. But by the help of sadhu, Jiva can go out from this circle of illusion and automatically will leave up anartha wrong identification and automatically we leave a parad what because what does it mean a parad i don't want that krishna supreme personality of godhead be my lord and i am become became inimical to him i don't want that this is independency no one will lord me And he said, Krishna is very kind. He said, okay, this is your desire. 
and I will give you a situation which you can fulfill your desire to be independent of me. <laughs> but in the moment when taste for Krishna name, form, qualities, and pastimes appears in the heart of devotee. Really taste. Devotee wants a relationship with him. This is the sign, real, real, genuine sign, that devotee left his conception that Krishna, God, is my enemy. He is losing this conception that he is inimical to Krishna. Because why we don't have a taste? Because still we didn't assign. <laughs> and assign means I'm not inimical to Krishna anymore. <laughs> but when we say, yes, my dear Lord, I belong to you. I accept my position that I am Krishna Nityadas. Then he said, okay, I will give you and bring you to my love. Because this is the only way how you can attain me. So this kind of circle, I don't know how to explain, this kind of circle, is not possible to overcome, to go out from it without the help of someone who is not in that circle. Yeah? How can I help myself if I am in the circle? How can I help my very nice best friend who is also in the circle? We both need someone who is out of that circle, who is not under the anarthas, who, has, who is not making apparatus, who has full loving devotion in his heart. We all need help of such a person and guidance. And blessings, kripa, and so on, and so on. And this is the fortune of the soul. Until the soul doesn't meet sadhu, pure devotee who is not in the circle of some samsara material nature, until that, the soul is unfortunate position. But in the moment we meet someone who is outside of that circle, he is Jiva Abhisar, starting under the guidance of a person who is outside of that circle. Real Jiva Abhisar starts there. And then Anarthas, first of all, they are starting to minimize. They are not disappearing like magic. They are minimizing <laughs> their influence. Aparadas are still, it's also minimizing their influence. And devotee, because of that, can progress, make a progress in his life. The more progress he is making, the less anarthas are present and upper others in his life. So, this is the science, isn't it? <laughs> Why this is the science? Because those who saw the truth, they are speaking us about the truth. They, they realize the truth, 
they are living in the truth and they are really scientists because to be scientists means to realize something and then they are helping others how can i help others if i cannot help myself i'm still in the circle i need the mercy so this is the process i'm sorry i took the time but it, i think that it's necessary to understand clearly our condition position and how to get out from that position that to so, goranga so yes, can yes. i share a little bit of course so very beautiful sharing and uh, i just uh, i was reading this nara maharaj's this sri ramanandaya sambada so this book mentioned so very interesting one so i want to share so the goal of sadhana bhakti is baba bhakti and if we attain baba bhakti very soon we can attain prema bhakti then nara maharaj was saying this baba bhakti or bhakti baba this bhakti baba is received by two methods we can attain bhakti baba or by or baba bhakti by two method one method is by the mercy of devotee bhakta prasad prasad ja and then another another method is by the mercy of bhagavan bhagavat prasad ja the, the mercy of Bhagavan strictly follows the mercy of devotee. So this is interesting. So there is two mercy, Vaishnava's mercy and Bhagavan's mercy. But even Bhagavan's mercy strictly follows the mercy of devotee. So we, we experience most powerful things is Vaishnava's mercy. Vaishnava Kuripa. Guru Kuripa is including Vaishnava's Kuripa. But the most heinous, most dangerous thing is Vaishnava Aparada, including Guru Aparada. So this is a, this is a very crucial point. We, we, we can get the favor from a Vaishnava or not. So this is very interesting. So we are this part discussing Anarta and Aparada. And uh, as far as my understanding that most dangerous thinking most dangerous thing is proud. And the most dangerous thinking is I'm right. You are wrong. And also criti critis criticism is very dangerous. <laughs> because we don't know really we are right, I'm right or not. We don't know really. But if we associate with devotees, what with Gurudev, Gurudev say you are wrong. What devotees say you are not uh, in good condition. <laughs> then we may understand. So therefore, we need somebody to check, check us out. 
So we need friend. We need association. So therefore, I feel this Sangha, international Sangha, or Sangha in Munger Raj Mandir is very, very precious, very, very important. And we need to get some favor from other devotees. Because if devotee priest, if Gurudev priest, and definitely Radha priest, or Mohan priest, Radha's Mohan priest. So this is uh, Gurudev say, check myself. <laughs> Don't check others. But our tendency check others. Don't check myself. So therefore, Gurudev's teaching is very, very nice. I, I was, at first, I was surprising. Don't check others. Check yourself. Oh my God. This is very, this is actually Raga Bhakti. I understand by the Bhakti, we have tendency to check others because I'm great devotee. But <laughs> Raga Bhakti is, I'm not, I'm not a good devotee. So I have to check myself. I'm not 24 seven. So therefore I have to, I try to be 24 seven. I'm not to fix myself, my swarup. So therefore I want to fix myself, my swarup. So la de la de. Thank you very much, Janandaji. Thank you, thank you very much. Jananda Maharaj was explaining the weakness of the heart. This is the greatest weakness of the heart to find the faults in others. I know from my own example. Try to, this weakness of the heart is also in the, in the form, coming in the form of enviousness, also jealousy. and desire for the fame. They are very subtly mixed with each other because I desire, I have desire for Pratishta, for the fame, automatically I'm finding the faults. I'm trying to find the faults in others. And this is the weakness of the heart. This is one kind of anartha. And from this kind of anartha, aparada, Vaishnava aparada appears. From weakness of my heart, up Vaishnava aparada appears. And like Maharaj said, this is the greatest aparada because I am offending someone who can help me. I'm cutting the hand of someone who is giving me a hand. Take my hand and I will pull you out from this illusion. And I'm saying, no, he doesn't know me. He doesn't know my specific case. I'm so special that he doesn't understand my mind, heart. He doesn't understand my condition of life. And so on and so on. So we can see here. So please, devotees, help me to overcome my personal apparatus and the narrative. Otherwise, what is the use of my 30, 40, 50, 70 years of practicing of devotion? Right. Right. Please stop. If by the grace of Sri Guru, Transcendental greed for this is awakened within the sadaka. 
then he will surely attain this relish. Bachan means to search and cry out, Where are you, Radharani? Every individual soul is qualified to become Radhika's maidservant. This is the great unprecedented gift of Sriman Mahaprabhu. Sri Radha is the embodiment of Mahabhav. Will Maya drag me away from her? O oh, Radhe, will I be lashed by Maya, being your maidservant? The practicing devotee feels as if he has fallen away from his beloved deity, and he will cry out, O oh, Radhe, where are you? In this way, he heard, uh, in this way, the heart will be squashed. Can Swamini ignore the eager prayer of someone who has given up everything for her sake? Taking Sham by the hand, she will come to witness the devotee's loving activities. Krishna is astonished when he sees the loving endeavors of his devotees. The Lord is the relish of Bhakti Rasa, the honey of devotion. He told Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, I will eat any offering of leaves, flowers, fruits, and water, which anyone may offer to me with love. O son of Kunti, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you sacrifice, whatever you give in charity, and whatever penance you may perform. Dedicate it all to me. The devotee is also very eager to attain the Lord's merciful glance. How sweet is the relation between devotee, devotee and the Lord. When Sri Raghuna Das speaks this verse, he sees a sweet pastime with his spiritual eyes. He sees himself as Tulasi Manjari, dressing up Swamini for her rendezvous in the moonlit night. To camouflage her, she has to dress up in fitting clothes and ornaments. So she dresses her in a swan-like white sari, anoints her body with white sandal paste, 
and ornaments her with pearls and diamonds, so that it seems as if Swamini merges with the moonlight. What can I say about Rai's passionate love for Hari? Cupid is constantly awaking in her mind. Her body is naturally shining with beauty and she goes out on rendezvous in a full moon night in autumn. Her body is trapped in a white dress. Instead of her usual blue one. And anointed with white sandalwood pulp. She puts white camphor lipstick on her red lips. Her braid is beautified with a garland of kunda flowers and the pearl necklace hangs and oscillates on her neck. A white kairava lotus is placed in her hand palm and rows of sandalwood spots are made on her jewel bangles. In this way, she cannot be distinguished anymore, just as the moonlight cannot be distinguished from the moon, and water can no longer be distinguished from the milk it is poured into. The shadow that accompanies every embodied soul in the moonlight or in the sunlight as an inseparable enemy cannot harm her anymore. For the night has already surrendered to her, saying, All right, for you there won't be any shadow anymore. Gopal Das further sings, Thus clever Gauri, Golden Radhika, goes out, loosening the strings of her ankle bells, so that their jingling will not betray her. Srila Rupa Goswami has written in Ushwala Nilamani. It is as if the girl merges with her own shyness. She has stifled all of her ornaments and covered herself with her veil as she goes on Abisar with her loving girlfriends. I noticed here when I was listening how night is, swarm, is serving the pastimes of Radha Mohan. And to protect Radhika, 
on her rendezvous, on her loving journey towards Mohan. Interesting Kunja. Knight said, okay, there will be no shadows. When the moon is so bright during the night, shadows are appearing from the trees, stones, persons, because it is so bright. But understanding the mood and heart and attention of Radharam, night declares there will be no shadow. I will swallow all shadows. And in that way, Radhika will be completely merged in this brightness of the moon. And all the forests will be so bright that no one can separate the light from this slight darkness of the shadows. And that way, night is serving light. And we should understand that everything what is existing in Raja is a conscious. Chinmaya Ras, it says, movable, unmovable living entities, wind, rain, sun, everyone is serving Radha Mohan according to that time and their desire for this particular living. And we cannot compare all these elements, day, night, wind, um, rain, and so on, with material things. We should understand that they are all conscious. And they are all, on their specific way, are determined and focused to give the pleasure to Radha Mohan, to enable them to meet, and if it's necessary, to help them to hide. So this is the how to hide in a full, bright, brilliant moment. We know that we have to, if we want to hide, we have to take the shelter of some dark place to hide ourselves, that no one see us. But we can see here how the light can also give the shelter and hide. Radharan is in her furious, passionate, running towards more. The light can also hide. And for that, Radhika is preparing also for herself. We read, Chakshuji read how Radhika is preparing herself for dark rendezvous, in the dark, without any moon, when there is no any light. And now we have another Lila, when she's hiding herself by merging in the moonlight. And her expert, loving, loyal, maid servants are decorating her and dressing her according to that bright moonlight night. expertise in seva which we sadhakas 
have to meditate in our bhajan, connect our hearts with these loving maid servants who are so expertly in their seva, and try to feel their feelings and try to learn their expertise from our spiritual identity. So night is the servant. Adjust. Swamini holds to Lassie's hand and follows her on the footpath. Fearfully looking here and there and saying, Tulasi, I have no other shelter than you. Take me with you. Her beautiful glances make the forest of Rindava even more beautiful than the carefully protected world of a newly opened blue lotus flower. The wonderful beauty of her eyes are as if awakening a flood of beauty on the chest of the environment's natural beauty. Swamini is afraid, but Tulasi encourages her, saying, Come, come, why are you afraid? Come here with you, I'm here with you. Srimad Bhagavad says, Fear itself is afraid of God. But now, in the Leela, the Lord's very pleasure potency shows signs of fear. Furthermore, in the 11th cant of the Bhagavad, the nine Yogendras proclaim, fear is caused by forgetfulness of God, expressing itself in Dehasmiti Buddhi, the idea that I am this body, making one afraid of death, disease, old age, accidents, and the lot. The Upanishads say, Oh, hey, you, conditioned souls, are the children of Amrita, the Nectarian Lord, or immortality. What are you afraid of? But Sri Radhika is Krishna consciousness personified. And still, she is afraid. Her eyes are restlessly going here and there. What a wonderful Leela! The pastime of Abhisa is unique in Raj. Sita Devi or Rukmini Devi don't have to face such obstacles to meet their Lord. But Sri Radhika's love is secret and therefore more exciting and pleasing to Krishna. Yes. The glories of Parakyabha, forbidden love. Forbidden love is full of risk that someone will discover lovers.
But this kind of anxiety in the lovers brings more intense exchange of love between them. When the husband and love uh, and the husband and wife are together, they are more or less always together. And for everyone else is a normal that they are together. Actually, they have to be together. Something is wrong if they are not together. But in this amorous parakya mood, forbidden love, so many dangerous situations are present, and this makes the risk should I really meet her or him? Can we be just five minutes together tonight or today? They are always in a fearful situation, but not for themselves. This is a very subtle point. They are not fearful for themselves. Radhika is not fearful for herself. Radhika is fearful that some obstacles will be so strong that she cannot come to Mohan to give him a pleasure for his satisfaction. This is her fear. Conditioned soul is very fearful for himself. And this is Anartha. Fear from death. Fear from the seas. What Baba is saying here more? Mm. From old age. Fear from accidents. Fear from losing the things or persons. This is the anartha because of wrong identification with this body. And sadhus are saying, don't do this. You are not this body, and nothing belongs to this body. Fear of Brother Rani and Krishna also has a fear. It's not the same fear. This kind of fear is a result of pure transcendence of love. Mother Yashoda is also very, very fearful. Oh, Gopal, don't go with the cows in the forest. Something will happen to you. The sun is very strong. Different animals all around. Maybe you will run and hurt yourself. Maybe cows will step on you. Please, don't go. Just leave this seva to someone else. Stay at home, my dear. This is the mood of motherly affection. And this kind of fear, this is very interesting, actually. This kind of fear gives the Krishna pleasure because he can relish mother's intense love, which is also expressed to her fear for himself. This gives him a pleasure. And the same time, when Radhika is fearful, these feelings, this expression of fear on her face is the signs of her unlimited love for him. 
So we can see here that in material world, one feeling has completely another meaning. And fear in material world, all of us, we have this kind of experience, can be very, very destructive. And it's not easy to rid myself from the fear. No. But in the spiritual lot, in spiritual relationships, the fear is something which intensifies loving relationships. Coward boys are also fearful for Krishna like his friends, their friends. Very just don't go there. There are some demons. They will hurt you. It's better to run away from them. We have to hide. Krishna, don't do this. Don't do that. I cannot tolerate to see how you are hurt. This may be your body is hurt. Some maybe you step on the sharp stone. Cover boys are also fearful because they have a love. This is the friendship. I am fearful for you, my dear. But not for myself. But for your benefit. This is the rasa. And we should try as much as we can to enter in this science of bhakti ras. In this science, deep science of loving devotional exchange and service. For that we need a mercy. Swamini looks at Tulasi, who makes her fearless. She feels consoled and silently walks on. Tulasi is Swamini's shelter. Blessed is this maid servant. Tulasi is also fearful for Adarani. I don't want to let you alone. I want to protect you. From outside dangers, but also I know that I have also to support you emotionally. You need my support. So please, Depend completely with full faith on me. This is the mood of love. You are mine. And if you are mine, it means that I'm taking care about you. And I have also fear what will happen with you during your abyssal. You have fear that maybe you will not or miss Krishna, someone will see you. This is your fear. But my fear is focused on you. I'm taking care about you, so please let me freely, without hesitation, to guide you on this beautiful Avisar. And psychologically, emotionally support you. <laughs> this is the beauty. This is our Bhakti Yoga. This is why we became devotees. We didn't become devotees to make us therapists, you know. We became devotees to relish this eternal loving sweetness. This means devoted. Devoted. <laughs> right. 
blessed is this maid servant that she can render such service. She provides shelter to Swamini. Who is the shelter of Sri Govinda? And who is again the shelter of the whole world? Tulasi says, I will bring you into the hands of he who eagerly sits down, hoping to meet you. How incomparably beautiful is the heart of this maid servant. How unfortunate I am that I am deprived of this nectarian Radha Dasya, although I know everything about it. I always identify myself with my material body and I never think of myself as Radharani's maidservant. I am simply mad after profit, adoration and distinction. Mercy is the only hope. Tulasi takes Vamini along, making her fearless. The course of the fulfillment of desires cannot be stopped. Can the thorny thicket in the form of her superiors be crossed? Govinda Das says, she shines like the personified splendor of Eros fame and glory as she meets Govinda in the Nikundra. Wherever the light of her body shines, all directions are filled with lightning-like illumination. Wherever her frowned eyebrows play the waves of the Amuna surge up. Wherever her reddish glances fall, there the blue lotus petals open. Wherever she Radhika's eyes fall, the forest becomes as beautiful as a cluster of blue Kuvalaya lotus flowers. And wherever she places her reddish foot soles, land lotuses spring out. One of the 108 names Srila Das Goswami gives Shiradika is Jaranabja Tala Jyotir Aruna Krita Bhutala. She who colors the surface of the earth reddish with the effulgence of her lotus like foot soles. When the kinkari sees Sri Radhika's eyes, she compares them with bees, Netra Bringa, because they are eager to drink the honey from Govinda's lotus like face.
In Srimad Bhagavat, the gopis also declare that the greatest fruit for the eyes is to see Govinda. We have eyes, but without love, we cannot see Krishna, even if we are standing on the spot where he danced and still always dances, the rasa. Divine eyes are required, eyes anointed with the ointment of love. Tulasi enters the dressed in Kunja with Shirada, who is dressed in white, like the fame and glory of the ornamentation of amorous enjoyment. Shyam is eagerly waiting and he floats in an ocean of rasa when he sees Tulasi and Swamini coming. Holding Swamini's hand, Tulasi says, a moonlit night, fear of superiors, daylight illumination, with unlimited expertise, I have brought your Sukumari, tender girl, here. Here, take your beloved. And places Swamini's hand in Krishna's hand. As Sri Raghuna Das stretches out his hand, he doesn't catch anything anymore. The revelation has disappeared and he begins to lament. Alas, O Swamini, when will that boundlessly sweet glance of yours become visible to my eyes? Raghunath's life airs reach his throat when he feels this agony of love and separation. Sri Rasika Chandra Das sings, Alas, O Devi, when will that blessed day be mine? when you will go out to meet Krishna in the full moon autumn night, which is inundated by moonlight. You are very much afraid at heart, and your restless bee-like eyes move in all directions. while you look at bluish Sri Vrindavan from the corners of your eyes, the Kuvalaya lotus petals begin to blossom. When will you mercifully cast a drop of your glance at this maidservant? That is the quintessence of happiness. I don't want anything else but your lotus feet. And this is the end of the purport. Rade, rade. Rade, rade, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jan and the G.
for your sharings and thank you all devotees for your sharing, silent sharing. You, you are sharing through emotions. It's not necessary always to talk. Through emotions we are sharing. This is silent and this is the best sharing. Thank you very much. I hope that by the mercy of Baba, by the mercy of Raghunath, by the mercy of our beloved Gurudev and the Vaishnavas, we catch some taste from real, pure Baba. This is our fortune, greatest one. And we should appreciate Like jewels, when you have a jewel, you appreciate This is the point of all sadhana practice, which slowly but surely can bring us to the Baba Bhakti like Maharaj explained, and then to bring. Yeah. I'm sorry if I offended someone. My mistake, arrogance. What should I do? I have to change myself, but it's very difficult. Anathas and apparatus are very strong. Thank you, Chakshi Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Goranga, for your invitation. Radhe, Radhe.